going to jump into week number two of Bricks or Sticks. So how many of you here last week? Here last week? Okay. So if you weren't here last week, let me catch you up. We are in the book of Song of Solomon. The book of Song of Solomon is basically a conversation between an older couple about their love story. So you can imagine, they're older, they are literally writing to us, to people, this is what love should look like, this is what a relationship should look like. And so uh, last week we started on dating. Here is who you should look for when it comes to dating. I can't tell you how many people told me, I wish I would have heard this message 20 years ago. And so if you are a teenager, if you're a young person, if you're single, you're not married yet, that message was for you. I gave you five C's. Uh, what, I, what I called things you should use to filter in and out people. You remember what they were? Anybody? First service, they were on it, right? 9.30 service, not expecting a lot from you. And so um, first service, they're like the type A people. So character, you remember character? Uh, what was the next one? Anybody know? What was it? Cheerful. That's, that was the last one, but that was an important one. And so cheerful, convictions, remember that one? And I don't remember the rest right now, and so we're just going to keep going. And so go listen. And so I didn't listen either. And um, but we gave you five, okay? And so five, five C's that you should filter your relationship through. So now, now we're going to get to the part of the relationship where they are on the way to the altar. Like they, they are falling fast for each other, right? You ever been there? Your, your heart is like beating like this every time you see them, right? Your palms get sweaty. Remember, remember the season of your relationship where you were so excited to see them. Anybody over the age of 40 here? Anybody over the age of 40? Put your hand up. Come on, own it. You don't look, you look good. And so, right? You remember when you actually talked on the phone to somebody? Like I, my, my, my kids have, have people they're interested in that they have never spoken to. They only text. I'm like, what's their last name? I don't know. Right? I do know their handle though. Right? And so, but like, you remember back in the day when you would call and you'd be on the phone with that person and you could just, you didn't even have anything to say. You were just remember that and you'd be like you hang up no you hang up you didn't hang up right you're in college doing it your roommate is like you are a dork right like you hang your phone up click right and you're and so and like that that they're going towards marriage they're deeply in love and so the title of today's message because oftentimes in that season we get in a hurry and we lose all logic like all logic goes out the door. We stop looking at it as a season that's exciting, but also something that we should be working at and preparing in, and we just, we just run through it. So I call this message not so fast. Everybody look at your neighbor, neighbor say not so. Not, not See, you even did it. First service did it too. I said not so, and you said not so fast because you're always in a hurry. Let's slow down. Say not so, not so. Fast. fast. You're going to slow down in this season, because the next season you get into, which is marriage, involves a ton of work. Any married people agree with me? Okay. It's a ma so if you don't get prepared, it's like this. When you're young, remember when you were young and you could eat whatever you wanted, you never gained weight? You know what I'm talking about? Like you can literally eat whatever you wanted, never gain weight, right? And then you get older, and if you keep the same eating habits, what happens to you? Right? You eat a donut, you'll jiggle for three years, right? It just jiggles. <laughs> Right? But when you're younger, I, I hate it. When you're younger, you would, I remember coming home after school, I would just go right to the Tasty Cake section of my house, right? And I would literally eat probably four or five uh, Tasty Cakes, like the, the, the butterscotch crimpets or, the, or the, the Tandy Cakes. I would pound Tandy Cakes and, so, and just eat them. And I had a specific way. And then when I was done that, maybe I'd get a bowl of cereal. Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I'd eat a whole bag of chips, right? When my parents come home, ask me where the chips go. I lied about it. I, Ryan ate them, right? And so, and like, like you just ate. And it didn't matter what you ate, you always felt good, right? But if you don't figure out in younger years how to have some form of discipline, what happens when you get older? You're, you're in trouble. And so this is the point of this message. We're going to learn how to work towards marriage. And so next week, we're going to take a look at marriage, and we're going to begin to work through intimacy. And, and if you have kids in this room, I'm telling you, you do not want them to be, don't skip church because you need to hear this message, but they need to go to Journey Kids, or they are going to get a sexual education from their pastor, which I'm perfectly okay with doing because the Bible talks about it, but it's going to be super awkward for you in here, right? And so you probably want to send them to Journey Kids, and maybe even today, I don't know what I'm going to say. I never know what I'm going to say. We just kind of go. And so you might want to go to Journey Kids. You have five minutes, come back, nobody will know. And so, and I won't feel bad. Nobody's going to think you're mad. You're just going to Journey Kids. And even if you are mad right now, nobody will know. And so you just leave. And so we're going to go into Song of Solomon, chapter number two. 
Song of Solomon, chapter number two. Because of time, Baptist is not going to read the whole passage to you and then jump back in. We're just going to jump into it. And what I want to want to want to give you kind of encouragement is I want to give you encouragement on taking your time in this season. Okay, I found somebody. I'm, I like them. I think their marriage potential, they got character, they live by convictions, right? They got all these things. They're cheerful, they're kind, they're, 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 they, they make me feel certain. That's a really important one, especially for girls. Like, I trust them. Let me, let me, let me just, girls, let me just give you, if you can't see yourself taken, because I, I was thinking about this a few, few years ago. I was driving my whole family. They were all sleeping on, on a road trip. Their mouth was open, right? All of them snoring. We're driving 21 hours. And I thought to myself, uh, this, this is what being a husband looks like because everybody in the car is entrusting me with their life. They don't know that I'm on Facebook right now. And so, right? <laughs> My wife trusts me enough to fall, to fall asleep in that car. If you're dating somebody and you don't trust them enough to fall asleep while they're driving, you shouldn't be dating them. If you're like, I don't even want to ride with them, right? Right? And so this is like, they're, they're, they're in this relationship. Okay, here, here's, here, here's chapter number two. They begin to work us through what I would call this, this time. Take your time into this season, right? And so here, here, here's the first thing you're going to do, the first time in this relationship. I call these the three times of your relationship, things that are going to happen between finding the person and walking down the aisle. Here's the first, the first thing you should take your time in. There's what I call the time of perfection, the time of of perfection. So Ecclesiastes, which Solomon also wrote, it says there's a time for everything, a season for every activity under, under the heavens. Okay, here's, 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 here's the first season. The season when everything about that other person is perfect. Remember that season? Like there's nothing they do that gets on your nerves. Even when they get on your nerves, like it's okay. You know, remember what I'm talking about? Like you're, so some of you, anybody holding hands in this place? Right? You should be. If you're sitting by your wife, man, grab her hand. Come on now. And so we're going to learn about crock pot next week. And so grab her hand. And so we will teach you some stuff. Grab her hand. Put your arm around her. Stop sitting like she's a stranger. Touch her leg. Do something like that. And so God don't care. He wants you to do that. And so you're like, I'm allowed to touch my wife? Yes. If it's not your wife, get your hands off her right now, right? <laughs> but you remember when, when you were dating and you were holding hands, right? And remember when you would do like the, like the holding hands and as you were holding hands, your fingers were making out with each other? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? They're just going in circles. I, I sometimes see people, I'm like, what are you, get a room, man, for your hands, right? Like, <laughs> everything is just, you just love them. Like, they, 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 you see them, and your heart's beating, and you hold their hand, and your palms get all sweaty, and when they talk, everything is funny, and their voice doesn't get on your nerves, and the way they smell, like, you're sleeping with their jacket in your room, like, you love the way they smell, and, like, their, their cologne, everything reminds you of them, and you're just, you're just in love. You guys remember that season? It's what I call the season of perfection. It's a great season. It's a cloud nine season. You're just floating through life. And so here you're going to see this season. They found each other. Watch what she says in verse number three, Song of Solomon. She says, he's like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my beloved among the young men. Right? She says, I delight to sit in his shade and his fruit is sweet to my taste. Let him lead me to the banquet hall. His banner over me is love. Strengthen me with raises and refresh me with apples, for I am faint with love. She says, like, I'm so in love, sometimes I forget to eat. <laughs> like, love is feeding me right now. Remember that? You're just, just so happy. Like, we'll go, we'll go to dinner, and we won't even eat because we're so, we're so infatuated with each other's eyes. We're just staring at each other. When we talk, everything is perfect. Like, she is so excited. She says, she says, his left arm is under my head and his right arm embraces me. You want to act that out? Where's his left arm? What, is he, what does she say? Under my head, right arm embraces me. He's dipping her. They're dancing. He's lovingly looking into her. Remember how I used to touch your, 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 your girlfriend or your wife, right? Then he says, daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and by the does of the field. This is her. She says, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. This is a really exciting season, but be careful with it, she says. Listen, my beloved. Look, here he comes. I love this. Leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hill. She's describing her, her, her future husband. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. He's a stud. She says, look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said to me, arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. Okay. You remember in that season of perfection when if you're a guy, you did stuff that you don't really want anybody else to know you did? Anybody ever write a poem? Like you don't want anybody reading that poem. 
right? Anybody have like cute, cute nicknames for your, for your spouse during that time, like girlfriend, right? You get married, you get mature ones. Like me and my wife laugh now. We'll be, we call each other, hon. Hey, hon, right? That's how you know you've been married for 20 years. But when we were, when we were, when she was, when, when we were like first day and I used to call her Bo Bear. I don't know. What's up, Bo Bear, right? You know what I'm talking about? Like, you, I, I don't call her that ever, anywhere now. That's embarrassing. This dude, he, like she's saying, like, look, look, he's the king. This dude is a stud. And if she, when she describes him, he's like, you, he's playing peekaboo with her. Like, you could just see him. He's like bounding in. He's like looking through the lattice. And she's looking at him. And he's looking back. And he don't want anybody else to see what he's doing. Trust me, because this is embarrassing. But he is that in love that he is not all inhibitions have gone out the door, right? Like, they're in the season of perfection. And this is a great season. This season doesn't last forever. It's going to feel like you're in love, like you got this love and you're in love and where everything's perfect. It's going to feel like you're in love in this season. But I want to remind you as a young person, as somebody maybe you've been in and out of relationships and you know this season, in this season, you feel like you're in love, but you're not in love yet. <coughs> love is so much deeper than a feeling. Like if you don't know that, um, maybe, maybe you're confused by that and you're like a Bachelor fan and you don't understand why it doesn't, keep work, like it doesn't work, right? Like, even all the old people that I dated, they're now getting divorced after three months. Did you see that? I don't know why I was on my news feed. Maybe because I'm a Bachelor fan. And so, and uh, <laughs> Gary and, 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 and Teresa, I think that was her name, they got married. It was good. You know, they, they fell in love. They did it maturely. They, they, they had this wedding. It probably cost $50 million on national television. And three months later, they're on a national news thing saying, we've decided it's just not working. You don't say, Gary. <laughs> You had 25 women, you had fantasy suites. Every date you had involved you being shirtless on a horseback, on a horse, on a beach somewhere. You didn't have grandkids around except for one time, no responsibilities, no work, no nothing. You ain't seen bedhead before you come online, you get makeup on, right? Like you, you probably been taking testosterone to get those, you know, those man things back up where they're supposed to be, like you. And you're telling me you're shocked it's not working? <laughs> and I love when they're like, she said she loves me. And I'm like, that's like the, ju- like the parameter. In the 16 week or 10 week or whatever it is episode, she said the word love. And you have this season where you're like, oh, I'm, in, I'm in love. I just, it just feels like I'm in love. And here's the problem. If you don't understand this is just a season, it's a good season, but it's not what relationships are built on, then what happens is as soon as you don't feel this, this season anymore, you break up with that person and you begin to go in a cycle of relationship to relationship to relationship. Some of you got married quickly in the season. You, they were still perfect. And then after you got married, you realize, woo, they are not. And now you need a counselor, but what, what you really need is you need some biblical wisdom to tell you nobody's perfect. If you're confused on if people are perfect, just look in the mirror. You'll, you'll, you'll figure it out real fast. Like, it's a good season to be in, but, but it, it, it's not the only season you can stay in. In fact, she says this. She says, I charge you by the gazelles and by the does of the field in the season. Do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Don't let your heart go to a place it's not supposed to be. You're not ready. So let me just give you a couple things. You're in this season. Let me give you two, three things you should limit. And these are going to shock some of you. First thing you should limit, I learned these years ago. I stole these. I've been telling every dating person this. I'm going to tell my kids this. If you're in that season, everything's perfect. I think we're going to marry this person. Here's three things you should limit. Number one, first thing you should do, limit your time. Why do, why do certain people get a relationship with the opposite sex and forget every other relationship they have? Like I, I had friends like that. Like They would get a, bo- a girlfriend, a boyfriend, and so, and uh, get a girlfriend, and then all of a sudden, you just wouldn't see them. Then they break up. They want to come back. You're like, I don't want to be friends with you. But you just, every, everything. You forget parents. You forget friends. You forget you. Like, you don't even have an, an, an identity anymore. Every, your identity is them and keeping them happy and pleasing them and making sure you're doing them and fulfilling them. And I'm going to tell you, let me, I'm not telling you not to spend time with them because you got to spend time with somebody to figure out if you like them. But every once in a while... You got it. Because if you're with somebody and they, they cannot not be with you, what you have is an insecure person, and that need that they have, you can never fill. They, they, will, they will crush you under that need. You, you, you will, to them, be what only Jesus should be to them. 
Let me give you another one. You should limit your, your talk. So uh, you ever meet somebody and everything is love? They'll be like, oh, my gosh, I love summer, right? And, and I love Ford trucks, and I love Starbucks vanilla lattes, and, and I love the cowboys, and, and, I, and, I, and I, love my sh- I love my shoes, and, and I love that. And you're like, you can't love everything. I mean, I was a junior high youth pastor. It was one of my, my favorite things was taking middle school kids to camp for five days. They would get to camp. They would meet somebody, fall in love, be at the altar praying for the future relationship before they hit puberty. I said, bring them into my dorm. I'd be like, you don't love them. I love them. We'd be pulling away, right? Heading back to Edmond, Oklahoma. They'd be heading to Sapapa, Sapapa Oklahoma or, or, or Yukon, Oklahoma, which is not the, and they would be crying in the, in the van of the church. Oh, I'm going to miss them. Like, you just met them. <laughs> but the funny thing is we do the same thing. We fall in love way too many times. I love you. you, you listen, love is a powerful word. Love is a weighty word. So you're going to be really careful in this season because you haven't yet, you're falling in love maybe, right? But you're not yet in love. You're going to be careful to bring, to, to bring that word in. Let me just give you one more because in this season, all sorts of explosive hormones are going to be raging and all sorts of desires. You already see this. But she says, don't arouse or awaken love. So let's limit our time. Let's limit our talk and let's limit our touch. Let's not take our relationship somewhere that it's not prepared to be. Let's not act like married people when we haven't yet committed to marriage. What happens a lot of times is you take your relationship to the physical side, and as soon as you take your relationship to the physical side, the emotional, the mature, the, 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 the building part of your relationship, it dies. It, it dies because all you're focused on is intimacy and physicalness. And then what happens is when you get married, and we're going to teach you this next week, in order to have the physical side, you also have to have the emotional, the vulnerable, the mature. And what happens is you don't develop that when you're dating, and then you get married and you don't have any sex. And you're confused because you're like, when we were dating, we just, it was like two bunnies, right? Like it just, everywhere we went, it clothes just fell off. And I thought I'm going to get married and it's just good clothes are going to be optional. I talk to married couples all the time. We, we, we lead them through tests, Simbis tests, and there's always how many times you think you're going to be intimate a week. And I love some of the young men. They're like, twice a day. <laughs> I just laugh at them. Like, what are you laughing at? Nothing. If you hit that, write a book. I'll buy it, right? <laughs> so num- number one. Number one, you're going you're gonna, to you're be careful with season of perfection. I always tell, tell, tell young people, it's like a baby bird. The illustration is a young boy finds a baby bird. This one even makes noise. You hear it? It's cute. And he's super excited. He gets his baby bird, and this bird's supposed to grow into a chicken or a rooster, but he's super excited, and he's running home with this baby bird. And as the bird's chirping, he squeezes it more and more and more, and all of a sudden you can't... You can't really hear it anymore, right? Like, it's dying. And finally, he gets home. He's like, Mom, I found a baby bird. And the baby bird just... (laughs) You just killed it. You have a baby bird in your your hand. But you got to hold that open-handedly. The season of perfection. Let Let me give you two more seasons. The second season is really important. After you get through the season of perfection, and you're on to the next season, you're like, okay, it's the season of preparation. The the season of, of getting yourself prepared. Here's what happens. If you don't begin to get yourself prepared in the good seasons, when the seasons of work come, you're not prepared for them. If you don't get yourself prepared, because there is no rush to get prepared when everything is good. You're not fighting about anything. Why don't we even have a conversation about this? But there needs to be a season where you step back as a male or a female. You're dating somebody. You're thinking about making them your spouse, which, by the way, that's a big deal. You are telling God, I'm going to marry one of your daughters or one of your sons. Are you tracking with me? If I had a daughter and you came and asked for her hand, it would be a big deal. We would sit, I would have a gun, right? And we would talk through details. And I would let you know, I was a part of making her. I've watched her go through, through, through life. I have dreams and plans for her. And if you're taking her on, it's a big responsibility, buster. 
When my kids come to me and they say, I think I found the one, I'm going to let them know. This is a huge responsibility. You're going to go talk to their dad and their mom, and you need to understand how significant this is. And so here's what you need to do. In this season, as you're moving towards marriage, you've gotten through the season of perfection. You've gotten to a level of maturity now. You're looking through it. You go, okay, now i got to get myself ready. Now i got to put myself through a season of preparation. Watch, watch what they say in Scripture. She says, see, the winter is past, and the rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth. The season of spring has come. The cooing of doves is heard in our land. The fig trees form its early fruit. The blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. And so he, he, here's what's happening. He, this is actually him, sorry. He has gone away for a season because he's about to get married to her. And in that culture, when you would find somebody you wanted to marry, then you realize this is, a huge, this is a huge responsibility. And you would go away, and you would get prepared to be a husband. You would build a house. You would make sure your debt was under control. You, you, you would probably go sell your video games. Let's just be honest, sell your video games. And so um, you, you, you would probably maybe start to limit your hobbies because you would realize, like, I don't have a ton of time to be me. Maybe, maybe you would start cutting some relationships out of your life because you're trying to be a married man, and it's really hard to be a married man with a bunch of single idiots. You talking, tracking with me? They just want to go out and party and do stuff, and you got to have dude time. And, okay, but are you trying to be a married man that's faithful and that's following your wife and has eyes for only your wife, or are you trying to hang out with a bunch of single dudes? What, which one are you trying to do? You're going to get yourself prepared. Some, some girls in this place, you're going to begin to get yourself prepared because here's the problem with so many girls. They look at that guy and they'll say, remember Jerry Maguire? When he was like, you complete me. <laughs> right? You complete me. You, you, you were the missing ingredient to my security and my identity and my self-worth. And my importance. And let me tell you something, girls. You put that on a dude, he is going to mess you up even more. Because the only person who can give you identity, the only person who can bring value, the only person who can make you feel important, the only person who can meet that need hung on a cross for you 2,000 years ago. Your husband, future husband, should be one of sacrifice. He should, the Bible says he should lay his life down like Christ did for the church. But there is only one Jesus. There is only one perfect male in your life. And you need to get yourself prepared. That's what she's saying. She's saying winter is over because here's what we did. We got real serious. And in the season of seriousness, we limited our time. We limited our touch. And we limited our talk. And we didn't just stop the relationship. We both went back and we both got ourselves ready. So let me just give you some practical things. Like here's some things maybe you should do. Because here, here is what's unfair. It is unfair for you to bring a mess into your relationship and expect the other person to clean it up. That, that is an unfair thing. Hey, here's my mess. I've created it. You clean it up, right? So here's a couple things you're going to do. Here, let me just give you some practical things. Maybe before you get married, you should go see a counselor and talk to them. Maybe if you can't afford a counselor, you find a mentor to speak to. Maybe you can't afford either of those. You listen to a podcast of somebody that speaks knowledge and wisdom into your life. Maybe you get a book. Maybe you join a group at our church. There's so many groups that are beginning all over our church. Maybe you go get, go get into a group with a married couple, and you begin to watch how they do life. But you need to get yourself prepared for what you're going into, because a lot of times what I found is people are very unprepared for the reality of marriage. So you're going to go through a season of preparation. Let me just tell you, talk to the single people, because you're like, I don't even have anybody. You're, you're prepping right now. The longer the prep, the greater the step. So I'm like, I've been single for so many years. Well, some of you, let me just, can I just be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? If the Lord were to bring the person you're supposed to marry into your life right now, you would ruin it anyways. So, so maybe he has you in the season of waiting because he has something really great for your life. And it's not even a maybe. This is the truth. He has something really great in your life. God's able to do immeasurably more you could ever ask you or imagine. But before you ever get to that season of your life, he wants you to begin to put the work in right now. He, he, he wants you to begin to put the effort in. He wants you to begin to work on yourself. Some guys in this place, you're like, I just want a wife, right? Which I don't meet many guys like that anymore, but maybe you're here. I hope you are. This is a great spot for you to be a godly man. And so you're like, I just want a wife. Okay, well, get a job. Get yourself out of debt right? Be responsible, get you a, a mentor, figure out what it looks like to work long hour, hours and be tired and still be able to give your best effort to the person that you love. 
get, get, get emotionally vulnerable, vulnerably mature, like deal, deal with yourself, deal with your issues, deal with your insecurity, get yourself ready for what God wants to do in, in your life. So there's going to be a season of prep. And the last one, the last one's really important because I think, so, so I think you get through the season of perfection. Okay, then you go work on yourself. Then, then you turn to that person and you begin to do real work in that relationship. I call this the season of proofing. Any voice texters here? Okay, couple, smart people. And so I'm a vo- I'm, I am strictly a voice texter. So they make fun of me in the office. I pull my phone out. I look up when I do it. And I'll be like, LOL, period, right? That is so funny, period. Can't believe they do that, exclamation point. Shaking my head, dang it, SMH, right? And so, anybody else? And, 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 because, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll just speak in it, and then I just, I don't even look, I just send it. Do you know how many times I've sent something to somebody that made no sense? I'm going to make a confession to you. Then I'll be like, oh, sorry, I was driving. <laughs> I was in my office. I'm just a voice texter. Okay. So I get in a hurry, and I don't proof, and I just send stuff out. And so this, this is a really good season. It's what I call the season of, of, of proofing. Looking at that person. Now, they're not perfect. But there are some very real conversations. There are some very real steps of wisdom. There are some very honest things. Like love will not carry you through. It's not, it's not the way it works. So there's some very real conversations that you're going to have. He says this. This is so filled with wisdom. Watch what he says in verse number 14. He says, my dove in the cleft of the rock, in the hiding places of the mountainside, show me your face. Let, you, let, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. He's like, man, I, I, I love you. And then he says this. This is, this is so good. He says, catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards. Our vineyards are in full bloom. And so this, this thing is growing. This, it, we're about to be at marriage. But oftentimes what destroys marriage, he said, he compares to little foxes that destroy vineyards. So you, it's hard to see a fox. Like they're just, they're there one minute, they're gone the next. They'll destroy the root system. Before you know it, this, this beautiful vineyard, it's, it's, it's gone. And so he says, in, in marriage, a lot of times, People miss the little foxes. People miss the little things. It's the little things that lead to the big things. In relationships, people overlook the little things. They, they overlook those things. They're just like, well, it would, when we get, we get married, it'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. We'll figure it out when we get married. And I told you last week, I said what you minimize in dating is often magnified in marriage. So let me give you some, some, some what I would call very sexy, unsexy conversations. Like look at the person and say, what do you actually believe about Jesus? If they get awkward and they're like, I just don't like to push my beliefs on people and I just don't, and you're like, that's not for me. Because I follow Jesus Christ and he's the way, he's the truth and the life. He, 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 he saved me and he set me free. So it's not that I push my beliefs because it's not a belief, it's the truth. The Bible says the truth will set you free. What do you, do you go to church? Ah. Not that much. I'm like into CrossFit and stuff like that. And I do my like, you know, stuff like that and all that stuff. And okay, I don't know if that's for me. Like, I know you got a good body and you're a 10, but like 10s, they often run out of fuel in this situation. So I'm going to need you to be a little deeper. What, what do you think about tithing? Whew. I tithe to myself, right? That's my job. And so oh, I don't, I don't. And so you have these conversations. Here, here's a good one. Hey, you want to have a family someday? Not really. I Googled. For, for us to have kids from zero to 18, it costs $2 million with inflation. And I really want to beat Chouse, and I want this, and I want that. Which I, listen, I'm not going to stand up here and dog that, even though the Bible says that as a man, you should want to have kids. Those kids are a blessing. If you can have kids, you should want to have kids. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I, I've seen old, old, at what happens at the end of the life. Nothing you do on this side of eternity, outside of your relationships, starting with Jesus Christ and everyone after, means anything at your death. But maybe they say, I'm not ready to have kids. You're a, you're, you're a, young, you're a young woman. You're like, I want to have a family. I'm not going to have a family tomorrow. But I want to have a family. And I, I don't really care about money as much. I want to, I want to make memories. And, I want to, and maybe, maybe you have that conversation. Uh, m- maybe it's family-wise. Hey, hey, uh, how do you act at family events? Like the, maybe the girl's like, we never. We, I don't go home for family stuff. And you're a guy. And you love your, your, your mom and your dad. And you want to spend time with them. And that, that's been a great blessing in your life. And, 
And you just have that conversation. Uh, and financially, you have that, that conversation. I put some more. Uh, um, uh, emotional capability. You ever, you ever been with somebody and when you get in a fight, they don't talk to you for like seven days? I'm telling you right now, I would never marry that person. You know who doesn't talk for seven days? Babies, because they can't. I feel like, you call me a baby if the shoe fits. You are not an emotionally mature person that can be in a relationship. Because to be in a relationship, you're going to have to be wrong. You're going to have to admit failure. You're going to have to speak through things. You're going to have to talk when you're angry and you don't feel. I'm not telling you not to give yourself some time to cool down. But you need to come back and talk about it. Because what you don't talk about has a tendency of resurrecting. So I would just start to go through that. In fact, the Bible uses this, this, this beautiful term. It says uh, to not be unequally yoked. Paul says it. Don't be unequally yoked. And I don't have time to, to, to show you the illustration because we have a lot of people getting baptized. But that unequally yoked is a, so we were talking about in the office and some people in our office were like, oh, is that like an egg? And I'm like, no. And so, <laughs> so I'm going to teach you first. It's, it, the yoke is a farming tool. And the farming tool basically is like a double upside down um, uh, W. And it will go over the, the, the backs of the, of the, of the, the cattle. And the, the principle was you can't get a small cattle and a big cattle and make them farm because what happens is they'll just turn around in circles. And that's what happens to a lot of people. You get married and then you get frustrated, but you had the chance to not get yoked to them in the first place. Because I can tell you right now, I, I had this conversation when I was looking at being a pastor and thinking about my life. And somebody told me, be really careful, be really careful who you marry. He said, a wife cannot qualify you for ministry. Because I was like, God, do I need a piano player, right? Can I? Because I didn't know Laurel then. And so I was like, I need a piano player. For my <laughs> but he said, he said, a wife cannot qualify you for ministry, but she can disqualify you for ministry. So be really careful. And I'm telling you right now, the only reason our church is the way it's supposed to be, many of you have never even seen the face of Leah, um, but she is the reason Journey Church exists. She is the reason it's here. Most smart things we do come because of her, not me. Don't ever be impressed with me. Most of the time I was going to do something stupid. I was going to go this way, and she said go this way, and I went this way first, and it didn't work, and so now I'm this way, and now I'm up here taking the credit for it. So I'm just telling you, go through the season of proofing. Look them in the eye. I I'm not saying some stuff you can't compromise on, but faith, kids, family, communication, money. I don't want to be stuck with somebody that's going a different direction than me. So logically, you're going to filter your way through here. All this before you get to the altar and you say, I do. I promise you, you'll thank me in 20 years. You'll go, thank you. Some of you, thank you for preaching that message because it was that message that led me to make a really difficult decision. And now I'm married to the person I was supposed to be married to. Some of you, you're both together, and you're going to go, thank you for that message. Both of us had to have really conversations, and it led us to work through some issues that were going to be even greater on the other side of marriage. But don't let this message go in one ear and out the other. Would you stand to your feet? Would you bow your heads, and would you close your eyes for me? Listen, all, all this, all this, it starts with Jesus. It all, it all starts with Jesus. It all starts with the relationship with him. At, at the end of our, end of our, our, our sermon... It's always about Jesus. We're going to have fun. We're going to laugh. Um, we're we're going we're gonna to have a good time. We're going to ask the Lord to speak to us through his word. But, but at the end of the day, every person in this room, um, their life and their death and their, their direction and who they are, it rests on a relationship with Jesus. Like it, I, I want you to, this, this series is not about you finding the perfect person. It's just not out there. We're going to help. We're going to bring wisdom. That the answer to your life right now is Jesus. It's always only ever going to be Jesus. Being found in Jesus, having the forgiveness of Jesus, receiving grace from Jesus on top of grace, getting direction and, and, and love from Jesus, having your hope restored through Jesus, getting power through Jesus. So maybe you're in this place today and you're like, man, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know him, but I want to know him. I don't have a relationship with him, but I, but I want to. I, I, I believe it with all my heart. Uh, as your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, that there is nothing better than that moment when you decide to, to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that in that moment, that if you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, somebody's like, what am I believing in? Well, God loved you so much that he sent his one and only son to this cross that 
Um, Whosoever will believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That he died on a cross for your sins, that he was placed in a tomb. And on the third day, he rose in power. And because of him, because of him, we can have our sins forgiven. We can just say yes to him. Jesus, would you forgive me? Would you heal me? And would you make me whole? In fact, that's what we're going to celebrate here at the end of this service, this new life that's found in Christ. And here's what I love. Don't matter who you are. doesn't matter how much you know or don't know. If you know you're a person who can't live this life alone, if you know you're a person who's weary and tired, if you know you're a person who feels overwhelmed, if you know you're a person that constantly looks for answers and never finds them, the Bible says, Jesus said, he said, come to me if you're weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so maybe you're in this place as we close and you say, that's me. I don't know Jesus Christ, but I want to. I want to lead you in a simple prayer. It's a prayer of faith, a prayer of confession. It's simple. Jesus Christ, I'm tired of running. I can't do life on my own. Today, I put my life, my faith, my future in your hands. And when you do that, you give him permission to come in and to begin a work that will absolutely change your life. That's what I believe. But you make the confession. Come on. I don't know Jesus Christ, but I want to. If I'm speaking to you right now, you don't even understand it all. But you can tell I'm speaking to you right now. That's me all over this house and all over Montgomeryville. Every head bowed and every eye closed. And you say, Pastor Steve, that's me. Would you just shoot your hand straight towards heaven and say, hey, you've been speaking to me. I need Jesus Christ to be my Lord and and, and my Savior. I want him to forgive, forgive me, heal me, and make me whole. Let's pray all over our houses. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for uh, everything that you are doing in this place, Lord. We thank you for your word, that it, it, it never returns void, that uh, it's filled with wisdom, it's filled with truth, and it's filled with direction. And so, Lord, right now, uh, for those that are in this season of their life, Lord, I pray that they would listen, they would follow, and they would do what it says, that they would take something in this, this, this sermon, and they would apply it to their life, and they would see the fruit of your power and your direction in their story. Lord, thank you for those that are getting baptized today, that, that, that didn't know you and now know you, that are getting in this tank, that are in Montgomeryville getting baptized. Thank you for what that represents. Lord, they were dead in their sin, and now they're alive in Christ. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for all that you continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. All over this house, would you shout amen? amen. Let's clap together. Thank you so much for spending this experience with us. We'd love for you to join us in person next Sunday at our Phoenixville or Montgomeryville locations. To get information on how to join us, what it's like to have a relationship with Jesus, or if you have any questions, visit our website at jrny.church or follow us on social media. We can't wait to see you soon.